Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be my one night episode 5 review. I want to say thank you so much for the sharing the video from last week's episode. That was it. That's the most views that I've done in any of my channels. So that I'm amazed. So thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'll just get into this episode. I feel like this episode was towards the, me watching this uh, episode and preparing to edit this. I feel like I honestly quickly understood what was happening and and everything became so clear which made me enjoy this episode even more and we start off the we heard like this little boy crying in a cave and then we see that he didn't see even a mark but turns out it's his uh, bloody nose so maybe it's probably Jake and he saw Dean talking to Dr. Hero about how he seems strong of him and how he feels and that I was trying to discover stuff within him, asking him if it's sense or nonsense, and the fact that it's Shake talking to Dr. Hero is really obvious in a way because we see that he has a bloody nose and Stephen Mark don't have that, and also we see that Dr. Hero is trying to in a way try to guide him and you know, calm him down because he's because Jake is probably on edge and he just wants to be violent and vicious and also, Dr. Hero wants him to this one Jack, to be heard too as well. So, I really appreciate that Dr. Hero actually cares about him. We go back to when we left off last episode where Stephen and Mark were talking to the um, Hippo lady. <laughs> and it turns out that, in a way, Mark is in the is in afterlife and it's imagined as a where he's staying at because that's where he must feel like inside being in there. We see that Stephen and Mark try to understand each other really well. I mean, they hadn't been told by the hippo that they were there. That reason why the afterlife for Mark is a death place. A place where he's really familiar with it because he's been isolated there for so long. and. Mark also points out that that Dr. Hero was right and Stephen's wondering he's a doctor, that's he's wondering that what that is and why, why he's a doctor and so like that and then we got to where the, the ship and that was when they were going towards the end there's a dead body there like, and it reminds me of the film Soul if you remember that film where like, it's basically the same thing in a way about why they would have to do to um, save, save, save themselves and the hippo um, is actually a uh, goddess of children and of mom and I guess in a way that's um, she's able to she was like, able to just ready to guide Stephen and Mark towards the, um, the place where they want to be was Johan be successfully into the real afterlife in a way and you know do that she has to take her horse and dance them on the scale. It's interesting that she uses two horses not not that Jake for some reason but with the other one that a little later but I see that all they do is that look not a bad thing so they have like they discovered themselves a little more so they don't into the place where they have discovered themselves each door is like a memory of each other and Stephen has said one of the doors of Mark in the street and he's wondering that why he doesn't remember being mentioned by that story Mark and Stephen are going to one of the rooms where we see that there's a bunch of people sitting down there or in a way that look like zombies because that's all of the people that Mark remembers killing and Stephen is really surprised by that me as well because I've the way that it's shown is interesting, just the relaxed, you know, that's the interesting thing. And there's a little bit of a um, editing mis mistake where if you see in the background here, we see that um, Steven is, has his hands down and then right here he has them up right there. So that's a little bit of editing thing, but that's, it's not that bit of a deal. But we see that they're into, you see the, every, it feels like 
almost every woman has a scale and then we see Simon sees a little boy and he follows him and it turns out that um, Mark sees his mom and the little boy turns his other kid and decide to go to a cave and then the mom reminds him what I for each other and she mentions later Gator kids are pretending to be the uh, kids from the film that we saw in the previous episode of Stephen Grant and then to that is a bunch of I don't know where it starts winning and then Stephen's really concerned and goes into the cave and we just that's something that, I mean that it's very important for St- Stephen to see that what, ha- what happened with the kid in the cave Wendy who is Mark's mom wants his son's lost and then he has to um, feel he feels bad so and then he wants to beat her for, for the mom but the mom pretty much shuts him down shuts him out and he says she's the what he tells Mark and it's all his fault but she said in the beginning of the episode and this she was really there for her Mark's life as a child and when she was she was um, really rude and disrespectful towards him and then Stephen wants to see what um, what happened in that room and Mark doesn't want to do that because he doesn't want Stephen to learn the truth but then he was one day he's trying to hide from him and Stephen wants to let him see what, what that room is about and they see that um, Mark is a teenager in a way and he's talking to his dad on the street about the fact that Stephen wants that Mark wants to run away and he wants to be on his own because that's how he feels and he doesn't feel like he has a family anymore because he feels that um, Wendy and Woody pushed him away in that way so he feels that he's better off on his own from all this and he wants to move on they end up in a place where where um, the Lila's Lil- father was killed in here even though Stephen knows um, this information and knows um, who he, he was is and will be coming in a way he feels um, shocked that it's that way because it's something that unusual for him and it's in a way new and to him it's in a way of him seeing this off in front of his eyes so Stephen only really feels upset that Marcus was a disabled person and he's only able to um, when Mark go doing all this after the after killing Lila's father, Mark had to go to a place where he could save himself, and he ended up being um, more like in himself. But Kanji wanted to bring him back to life as far as he was um, became more like that, and he was really easily convinced because Kanji was definitely in the lane. Mark from the start, even Stephen pointed that out to Mark about dangerous country was so country was really shitty from the very beginning and Mark and Steven are trying to figure out what's happening with the boat and it's rocking and because it's something that all the hero is responsible for and it's something that he's still in the MCU type of world where he don't want to do it it's in the beginning where he's killed people before they did bad things he's um, continuing to do so and he's It's not worth it, and which is a complete lie because um, Steven says that everything has to, it has to be worth it because it's something it has to be very important, and that's what it has, that Mark has to do before it. it's too late. Um, Dr. Hero speaks to, to Mark, and but why this? Why he has to who create a who because of. Everything that has happened with 
Marcus, mom and always eating. Basically, he has to really hope, have to make a different show, a different God, try some open up to Stephen and show him the, the truth is that the truth, the truth is that Mark gave him a made Stephen up and want him to have a happy life and also in a way with with um, not that it's not to be um, confronted by punishment basically so let's see what says that is like what my stress ball and that's basically what Mark just was doing to Stephen so basically he was taking advantage of him which is upsetting him and it's the only way Stephen was, was resisted because it was something that Mark wanted to truly do on the way again. So now Stephen is talking to Toto Hero and he wants to um, know why is he there and Toto Hero explains that he's there because Mark opened up to him and now the fact that he, Stephen was the one who brought um, Mark into the building apparently I feel that's what happened uh, which made sense because he wants to take care of Mark wants to make sure he's safe and he doesn't hurt anyone and all these things I know I understand why and he feels and the truth is that the girl is between Mark is the real person so Stephen doesn't have a mom and Stephen is really upset when he finds out that the person on the other side of the phone is no one there and I thought and I feel that he will, at first I was wondering why he would, would do something a little cruel but I also understand that it's because he wants to help um, slowly um, show Stephen the truth and we see a flashback of um, Mark in the street and um, Mark's mom passed away there. Mark is really upset and crying and so he changed his personality to Stephen and Stephen feels lost and he doesn't know where he is so he calls his mom so that way Stephen can in a way talk to his mom with a phone and that explains why this much of phone calls that explains why he's been calling his mom so many times from the very beginning of the episode too when he found out Mark was a Mark was in him. and now everything made sense now and Stephen and Mark were really upset with each other and there's something's going on in the boat and basically it times up basically the skills didn't really work and Peter and a bunch of people who Mark killed were on the boat and trying to kill them or draw, more, draw them off and I really loved it. Uh, Steven really helped walk out there and also about it. And I went in the same because he struck this as well. <laughs> and I really loved it. How uh, we do that then. Unfortunately, Steven has thrown off the ball and turns into the statue and it becomes those like, skills balanced. So maybe it's he did that because in a way Mark found closure within himself and that's able to himself and I had to be in the one house literally so I feel like that's what the point of the episode was is that what this episode was trying to show us that Mark had to open up to Stephen to let go of Stephen to be his own self again and now uh, after life I feel like this episode was really well done and I love the character who, who played I love how they introduced Mark's mom and how the thing of the brother was interesting about how it really all came to fruition and everything was simple and in a way I really agree with what Dr. Hero said in a way that in a way he's not really Stephen and Mark's enemy. Now of the hero in the MCU the, that's a bit, in a way a different character so that's different that's different character from Dr. Hero but he actually helped Mark out and also helped him open up really well so I really appreciate seeing this type of thing happen and this episode reminds me of WandaVision where Agamemnon was trying to find 
find somebody who's been a wonder. I feel like that's what similarities here as well and to be, to be can tell. And just like said before, this episode reminded me of the Prince so Mount movie from Soul, so it's um, really interesting as well. Hopefully, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see all of you next week for the season finale of Moonlight. Have a wonderful day. Bye.